that the individual in question has been charged with criminal offences and that the House's subjudice resolution applies to those charges. Members should therefore take care to avoid referring to the details of those charges or saying anything which assumes the guilt or innocence of the individual concerned. Uh, statement, Lord Chancellor and Secretary of State for Justice. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, thank you. Uh, with your permission, I would like to make a statement on the escape from HMP Wandsworth yesterday morning, Wednesday, the 6th of September, of a prisoner by the name of Daniel Abed Khalif. Daniel Khalif was remanded in custody at HMP Wandsworth on the 28th of January this year, having been charged with offences alleged to have taken place in 2021 uh, while he was serving in the armed forces. As you, Madam Deputy Speaker, have already indicated, the House will understand that while there is a live criminal investigation in progress, there are limits on what I can properly say. Daniel Khalif will be caught in due course and will face a trial. Nothing should be said in this House or elsewhere that might prejudice those proceedings. So let me assist the House with what I can say. At approximately 7.30 yesterday morning, a vehicle which had made a delivery to the prison's kitchen left HMP Wandsworth. Shortly afterwards, local contingency plans for an unaccounted prisoner were activated and, in line with standard procedure, the police were informed. The prison was put into a state of lockdown while staff attempted to determine Daniel Khalif's whereabouts. The vehicle was stopped and searched by police after the alert was raised. Strapping was found underneath the vehicle, which appeared to indicate that Daniel Khalif may have held onto the underside of it in order to escape. The search is underway. His Majesty's Prison and Probation Service are giving every assistance to the Metropolitan Police's operation to recapture Daniel Khalif and return him to custody. As has been made clear by the Metropolitan Police, there is no reason to believe he poses a threat to the wider public. Yesterday, when I was first briefed on this grave security breach, I spoke to the Governor of HMP Wandsworth and senior HMPPS leaders to establish what was known about the escape and seek assurances about the immediate measures being taken to ensure the security of the prison. I made clear then, and I reiterate now, that no stone must be left unturned in getting to the bottom of what happened. Who was on duty that morning? In what roles? Ranging from the kitchen to the prison gate, what protocols were in place? Were they followed? Second, I have ordered an investigation into the categorisation decision by HMPPS were all relevant matters taken into consideration in determining where in the custodial estate Daniel Khalif should be held. In both cases, I have asked for the preliminary findings to be with me by the end of this week, and an assessment will be made then about what can properly be put into the public domain. I have also decided there will need to be an additional independent investigation into this incident, and that will take place in due course. I want to turn, Madam Deputy Speaker, to the wider prisoner cohort held by HMPPS. In light of these events, I have ordered two urgent reviews. First, into the placement and categorisation of everyone held in HMP Wandsworth, and second, into the location of all those in the custodial estate charged with terrorism offences. Let me turn now to the issue of prison security. As the House will no doubt be aware, escapes from prison are extremely rare and the numbers have declined substantially in the last 10 to 15 years. This has been due in considerable part to sustained investment in improved physical and intelligence security. That includes investment of £100 million in the period since 2019 on measures such as enhanced gate security with X-ray body scanners, which has driven up the fines of drugs, weapons and other contraband, including tools that could be used to aid in escape from prison. HMPPS has also enhanced intelligence and anti-corruption operations in prison, working more closely than ever with partners including the intelligence agencies. This has involved productive initiatives such as setting up the joint counter-terrorism prisons and probation hub. Madam Deputy Speaker, Daniel Khalif will be found and he will be made to face justice. I commend the statement to the House.
Shadow Secretary of State Shibana Mahmood. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I thank the Secretary of State for advance sight of his statement. And I would like to reiterate our support for the police and all of those who are involved in the search to recapture Daniel Halife. And I very much hope that uh, that search will be brought to a swift and successful conclusion so that the rest of the legal process uh, may take place. Madam Deputy Speaker, this is an extremely serious matter and it has highlighted catastrophic and multiple failures, not just in respect of this case, but of our wider criminal justice system. It simply beggars belief that a man being held on suspected terror charges was able to escape a prison by clinging to the bottom of a food delivery van. The simplest question for the Justice Secretary today is how on earth was this allowed to happen? How is such an escape even possible? And nothing that he has said to the House today so far gets us remotely close to a full answer to this central question. Now, I know he will say when he responds to me that it is early days, that he has ordered uh, the relevant investigations and they, they must have some time to conclude. But with respect, Madam Deputy Speaker, it gives me no confidence that the Secretary of State has today arrived with a list of very basic questions that, frankly, he should already know some of the answers to and be able to share with the House uh, today. Uh, I note with complete agreement uh, both what he says and your direction, Madam Deputy Speaker, that nothing must be said, either in the Chamber or indeed anywhere else, that may prejudice any future trial or indeed the live uh, operation that is currently underway. But the circumstances and the facts of the escape itself are a separate matter that, is of, that it is of legitimate and urgent concern to yeah. this House and also to the wider uh, public, and that is separate uh, from the nature of any and all charges that will form the basis of future trials or other uh, investigations. And really, the Justice Secretary does need to give much fuller answers to the House today rather than a list of his own questions. And so on the circumstances of the uh, escape itself, can he at least tell the House when he responds how many staff were on duty at Wandsworth Prison uh, yesterday? Is he confident and can he tell us that all of the relevant searches uh, were done and where there are failures? perhaps the number of protocols that he is uh, concerned may have uh, been breached. Will his uh, investigations assess the quality of the training and the experience uh, of prison staff uh, at HMP uh, Wandsworth? And will he be bringing in any additional expertise to assist with those matters uh, whilst he is uh, getting on top uh, of the facts uh, himself? In respect of the categorisation uh, of this particular uh, prisoner, Madam uh, Deputy Speaker, why was a suspected uh, terror offender held at a Category B uh, jail whilst on remand, despite many other suspected and indeed convicted terrorists being held in the high security uh, estate? Why was Daniel Khalife moved from Belmarsh to Wandsworth? And can he at least tell us whether a risk assessment uh, before any such move took place was undertaken? That is at least a yes or a no uh, answer. Uh, can you tell us how many similar suspects are in Category B or indeed uh, HMP uh, Wandsworth, and what is the timescale uh, for such uh, an assessment? Um, in relation to uh, the two urgent reviews, uh, may I say to him, with respect, it should be a relatively short exercise to get across the detail and the, the total number uh, of the current prison population at Wandsworth, and the fact that the Justice Secretary hasn't come to the House uh, with even that small amount of detail, I think, uh, I do have to say, Madam Deputy Speaker, is unacceptable. Uh, on the issue of the location of all of those charged with terror offences, can you tell us the total number uh, of the individuals that are being uh, considered uh, in this category uh, as of today across the whole uh, of the prison estate? Uh, when will that urgent review of those numbers, uh, and I hope he can share the total number, when will that urgent review uh, take place? And 
I accept he cannot share any details, but does he know the number uh, of individuals that might be of concern and who may need to be moved uh, to a different location, given the events uh, of yesterday? On the broader investigation, Madam Deputy Speaker, I, I note the Secretary of State has ordered a fuller investigation. Can he say anything today in his response to me in relation to the terms of reference uh, for such an investigation? What does he envisage uh, for the time scale uh, for that longer, uh, fuller investigation? Uh, and on the matter of independence, can he give us some reassurance as to uh, whether uh, he will make sure that uh, it won't be a case of him and others who are responsible ultimately for this failure marking their own homework? What, what, what consideration is he given to the independence and the identity of who might be carrying out that investigation uh, for him? Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, the developments of the last 24 hours have shown us yet another example of the Conservative mismanagement, which has meant that they are unable to run vast swathes of the public realm, whether it be schools threatening our children's education and their learning, or now with a terror suspect on the loose. Ultimately, one of the main functions of government is to keep its citizens safe. And on his watch, Madam Deputy Speaker, courts are in crisis, probation is in crisis, the CPS is in crisis, and prisons are in crisis. So finally, when will the Secretary of State get a grip? Yeah. Well, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and can I begin by welcoming uh, the Right Honourable Lady to her place. So uh, I will try and address the, uh, the points that she raises. First of all, it is important to note, and I was pleased to hear her remarks about not wanting to prejudice a future trial, escape is a criminal offence, so we do need to keep that uh, in mind. Uh, she asks about whether there will be uh, inquiries into staff on duty, the quality of training. Absolutely. That's precisely what I have uh, asked to take place. She asks about whether there's additional expertise in place. Yes, uh, that's already in place in Wandsworth at the moment, assisting with the investigation. But as I indicated in my opening remarks, I want to know who was on duty in the kitchens, who was on duty at the gate, what was the protocol that was in place, was it uh, applied, and if it wasn't applied, why wasn't it applied? These are all the questions that I've asked, and uh, she can be assured that they will be answered. Uh, on timing, I've already indicated that I want to have the preliminary answers on my desk by the end of this week, and I will then be able to make a decision considering all the relevant uh, uh, information about what can be put into the public domain. But we have to proceed carefully and on the basis of the evidence, and I say that because she raised a question which was factually incorrect. She said, why was he moved from Belmarsh? He was never in Belmarsh. And with respect, it is important, it is important that we don't proceed on the basis of misinformation. So I, I can make that point uh, clear. So I, I absolutely understand the proper public interest and the proper points that are being raised, that's fine. But if she needs to raise any, ask any questions to me on matters of detail, she has my number, she can call. Uh, let me say uh, also, uh, on the issue of who is held in uh, category, on the Category B estate, that is exactly what I have asked uh, the inquiry that I have asked to take place. In respect of Wandsworth, I think perhaps she's, um, no, I mean, no, no discourtesy, I think she may have misunderstood what I was suggesting by means of an inquiry. It's not an inquiry into the number of prisoners in Wandsworth, that's a matter of public record. It's about are the right people in Wandsworth? And are those Wandsworth prisoners, should they be there or should they be elsewhere? That is what needs to be uh, answered. Uh, as for the independence of the investigation, of course that's right, and that's, why it, it, that's precisely why I've ordered it. Um, so in, in summary, the position is this. This is a grave incident. She's right about that. The plenty of points she raises are perfectly legitimate, and we will get answers as quickly as possible. But we do need to proceed on the basis of the evidence coolly and calmly, so that when he's called, as he will be, he will be brought to justice and justice will be done. Chair of the Justice Select Committee, Sir Robert Neill. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the Secretary of State for the, the statement and for his courtesy in giving me uh, notice of it, and actually for the thoroughness and care with which she has characteristically uh, approached this matter. He clearly is going into the detail uh, carefully uh, and in a measured fashion, which is the right approach. And I congratulate and welcome uh, the Shadow Secretary of State to her post uh, too. The Secretary of State has accepted the need for an independent element, and the Justice Committee has more than once referred to the need to avoid the prison service marking its own homework. Yes. Will he bear in mind in that regard uh, the uh, work that's already been done by Her Majesty's uh, Chief Inspectors of Prison and Probation 
uh, in relation to Wandsworth and other prisons. They have real expertise, and I hope he will avail himself of those. And secondly, in relation to his wider uh, inquiry into the relation to the prison situation, on the face of it, when there has been a significant improvement in gate security, the failure of gate security on this occasion is all the more alarming. It's a matter of record uh, that there is an issue with staffing at Wandsworth and that there is an issue across the prison service with retaining experienced staff. We have a large number of comparatively inexperienced staff. Evidence submitted to the Justice Committee's inquiry on the prison workforce it demonstrates concern at levels of training in some establishments. Will he make sure that those are fully taken on board as part of a serious review of prison workforce are on the back of this? Stay. Her Honourable Friend is absolutely right to draw attention to these matters. Now, as I have indicated, the inquiry must take its course and the issue of staffing will no doubt be considered. Uh, uh, and necessarily, we can't go into a huge amount of detail, but what I can say is, of course, in all prisons, staff take on different roles. And on the specific issue of staffing at the security end of the prison, uh, the, the positions were staffed, the security posts were occupied. The question is, were the protocols applied and did people do what was expected uh, of them under those protocols? That is something that we need to get to the bottom of very urgently indeed. SNP spokesperson Richard Thompson. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And can I yes. All lines of inquiry are being considered, and all the ones that I'm sure around this House are occurring to members here. Dr. Rosanna Allen Carr. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. Local people in Tooting are alarmed that someone was able to escape from what is supposed to be an extremely secure prison. A few months ago, Madam Deputy Speaker, I raised the issue of low staffing levels with the Justice Secretary because I had concerns after speaking with local trade union, the Battersea and Wandsworth Trade Union Council. My parliamentary question revealed that, shockingly, only seven prison officers turned up for a night shift last December to cover 1,500 inmates. It's unworkable and unsafe. Staff are having to do double shifts with officers facing violence, abuse and struggling with their mental health. This makes staff retention impossible. In these circumstances, undoubtedly mistakes like this will happen. Since I raised the alarm many months ago, can the Secretary of State list the meetings he has held with the prison leadership? Can the Secretary of State also tell us what the average number of staff is per shift at Wandsworth Prison and the number of staff forced to take Payment plus overtime shifts. Sadly, Madam Deputy Speaker, this isn't the only significant challenge the prisoners faced recently. In November, they were without water for six days. Prisoners, prisoners couldn't wash and had to rely on bottled water. This is an endemic problem throughout our public services due to 13 years of Tory mismanagement. School buildings are crumbling. Our prisons are overstretched and falling apart. Our NHS is under-resourced. When will they get a grip and sort it out? I thank the Honourable Lady for her question. She began by um, expressing the concern on behalf of her constituents. She's right uh, to raise that. I, I would in invite uh, her and indeed uh, her constituents to consider the remarks from the Metropolitan Police, which is believed to be a low risk to the community, and that's important that we stress that in this House. On the issue of staffing, it is an overriding and overwhelming priority for me to increase numbers, and I'm pleased that the numbers are going up, and of course I want them to go up further, but it's positive, I think, to note that uh, since the 30th of June 2023, there has been an increase of over 700 full-time equivalent, that's band three to band five, so wing officers uh, up to CMs, up to custody, uh, custody managers. That is positive. We have further to go, I entirely accept. But what is also encouraging is that if you look at the resignation rate, that is coming down. So